Return of the Mount Hua Sect Chapter 171 Once they get hit, they're bound to move. It seems to be Yaksun who made the sword tomb. After hearing the explanation from Baekchun, Hyunjun looked at the box in front of him with a shocked face. Soul Vitality Pill. There was no doubt about it. Just the smell of this pill made him feel like his dungeon was shaking. Besides, if this box really came from where Baekchun said, then there was nothing more to doubt. Who would put a fake in such a place? If it wasn't Yaksun, no one would do it. And if it wasn't Chongmyung, no one would find it. And... Hyunjung looked at Chongmyung with bright eyes. He stood on equal footing with Wudang's Ho Sanja. However, it was clear that Chongmyung didn't lose the fight to this Ho Sanja. <laughs> he couldn't stop himself from laughing. Would Hyunjung be able to achieve the same results after fighting an elder of the Wudang sect? Their elders were powerful to the point of absurdity. However, it was not only Chongmyung's strength that truly surprised Hyunjung. Chongmyung's power was nothing new, and Hyunjung had long since given up on understanding him. What really surprised him was Chongmyung's heart and how he perfectly grasped the meaning behind Yaksun's arrangement to find the real tomb. Even Hyunjung didn't understand why Yaksun's tomb would be there, despite hearing it explained so clearly. Didn't that mean Chongmyung alone understood everything that Yaksun had hinted at? I've thought this child was clever since the Una merchants incident in the past, but he didn't expect it would be to this extent. At that moment, Hyunyoung glanced at the pillbox and opened his mouth. Then, Hyunyoung took the box from Hyunjung's hands, almost like snatching it away. Hyunjung, who found his hands empty, felt a lingering regret for not holding the box tighter but remained silent since he could understand Hyunyoung's intentions. Well, then, this, this is the soul, so, soul vitality pill. Yes. The same pill that is said to have been Yaksun's finest creation. Yes. Hyunyoung looked at Chongmyung with blank eyes. Hyunyoung's pouting face had changed several times in the last few minutes. D this, uh, are you really the god of fortune? Just how in the world do we get a guy who keeps bringing such things every time he goes out? What are you asking? Am I a dog that brings in things from outside? <laughs> are you sure you don't have any more work to go out and do? No, no, no. You are such an accomplished person. Feeding you meat for three days straight wouldn't be enough to show how I feel. That will not be enough. Let's go. Let's go and catch you a pig. No, I'll bring a whole cow for you. What would the guy who brought the soul vitality pill want me to catch? Unam was breaking out into cold sweat. Uh, elder, calm down. Do I look like I can calm down right now? This is insane. The soul vitality pill. What the hell happened? We send you to Nanyang to repay our debt and you come back with this in your hands. If I send you to the North Sea, you'll probably bring back the wishful beads. Sec leader, don't we have any more work outside? It looked like Hyunyoung was ready to send Chongmyung to the North Sea right away. Chongmyung flinched at the elder's passionate intention to send him away. Huh, <laughs> the soul vitality pill. As if unable to believe it, Hyunsang looked at the box and then at Chongmyung. Who wouldn't be surprised? The soul vitality pill and the sword tomb were things they had never thought of. They sent the children to solve the affairs of the Huayong sect, but who knew they would return like this? Hyunjung, who came to his senses first, cleared the situation with a heavy voice. You have been through a lot. No, as disciples of Mount Hua, it was something we had to do. But, Baekchun was a bit shocked at Hyunsang's sudden rebuke. It's good that nothing happened, but this time you are pushing your luck. Baekchun bowed his head without another word. Now that you obtained the soul vitality pill and its formula, I can't deny that you've done something great, but if any of you had died along the way, we wouldn't all be able to smile like this. Baekchun nodded his head. Hyunsang was right. How often had they nearly crossed over into the land of the dead within the sword tomb? Getting out of there alive was half a fluke. I will keep that in mind. Right. Don't think of this as nagging. 
your safety is far more important to us than any pill in the world. Hyunyoung, who listened from the side, snorted. If Sayoung says it like that, what will they think of me and the sect leader? Hyunjong's eyes widened. No, why are you bringing me into this? Why drag in someone that's being silent? First calm down, Saje. Hyunyoung licked his lips as if he wanted to say something else. But he kept silent in respect for the sect leader's authority. Hyunjong gently pulled the box from Hyunyoung's grip, though he didn't want to let go. However, when Hyunjong glared at him, he released his grip and looked at the box with a sense of regret. Hmm. Hyunjong coughed and placed the box back. He felt that Hyunyoung was in full swing and might go sell the treasure somewhere. Baek Chun. Yes, sect leader. Does anyone else know that you have obtained this? We told no one. Even the Hwayong sect. Hyunjong nodded his head. Good job. Blood spills over good treasures. If it became known that they had obtained this, many people would target Mount Hua. There may even be those willing to raid Mount Hua with their entire sect to get this in their hands. The good news is that not many people know about Yaksun or the existence of this box. Most people who entered the sword tomb were only interested in the divine weapons. There were only two sects that knew. Wudang and the Beggars Union. Two sects of the nine great sects knew about the existence of the soul vitality pill. But they wouldn't come and attack Mount Hua just because of that. Although, they might still interfere in things. Hyunjung held no faith in the great sects since they rendered no aid to Mount Hua once they believed it would collapse. But not even they know we obtained this. As long as we're careful not to let this information leak out, there should be no problems. The fact that Mount Hua is located in the rugged mountains was also helpful. If it was Wudang or Shaolin, they wouldn't have had to hide the fact that they got the pill formula. Hyunjung opened the box and took out the book. More important than the pill itself was this book. The saints must have helped us. Chongmyung smiled at those words. It wasn't that he was smiling at Hyunjung. This time, it really was like the saints of Mount Hua had helped. If Chongmyung hadn't dreamed of the past with his Sahyong, then he wouldn't have found the tomb of Yaksun. <clears throat> but... Huh? Receiving Chongmyung's curious gaze, Hyunjung put the box down in front of him. Listening to what you said, it seems like Yaksun hoped for someone like himself to find the soul vitality pill and carry on his legacy. Chongmyung immediately grabbed the box. Then I'll go sell this and come back. Huh? Huh? Listen to a man's words till the end. Hyunjung, startled, changed his words. Although, I do think of Yaksun's legacy, but if Mount Hua manages to use this pill to resurrect and fulfill our duties as a martial sect, then Yaksun would surely be delighted by that as well. Rather, I think he'd curse us. If there was a world where the ancestors could look down on people, Yaksun would probably be spouting curses at Mount Hua right now. Well... Of course, he would be beaten by Chongmyung Sayong's up there. Sayong, please do that. Hyunjung shut his eyes and organized his thoughts. Chongmyung didn't urge him either. He could understand just how confused the sect leader would be to suddenly have these important things in his possession. We need to check these out first. Finally, Hyunjung spoke to Unam. Bring me the practitioner. Shh. The bookshelf was being swept through. The head of the medical practice was sweating as he confirmed the book's contents. Among those in Mount Hua, Ungak was the most proficient in medicine and healing, so he had no choice but to perform this duty. <sighs> Ungak groaned and looked down. Well, it certainly takes a hell of a long time to read a book. Standing there for so long without answers enraged Hyunyoung. Hyunsang gave him a disparaging look that seemed to ask him to calm down, and he lowered his voice with a grim expression. Even Ungak seemed to be losing his mind while reading the books. He was already flustered at the sudden call to inspect this, but while checking the secret formula of the pill, the young disciples, Beck disciples, and a couple more were feverishly looking at him with blazing eyes.
Even Confucius himself wouldn't be able to concentrate in such a situation. However, even Hyunjung, who should stop them from pressuring him, was looking at him with fearsome eyes. S Seg leader. Yes. How is it? This. This definitely looks like a genuine article. The secret formula seems right. Although, there are some things so complex that I cannot even imagine. But. Unga gulped and spoke. Even if I don't understand the sophisticated things written down, it's described that one can make the pill as long as they faithfully follow the method given here. Oh! Hyunjong looked at Ungak with blazing eyes. And so? You mean that you can make it? Ungak replied with a smile as if he could and spoke. That. that's a bit too much. In the end, Hyunjong burst out. Hey! Are you playing around with people right now? Calm down, Sasuke, no, Elder. Sweating, Ungak said, It isn't difficult for me to make the soul vitality pill with my abilities. If one has this book in their hand, then anyone who knows how to handle medicine will be able to make this. Then what's the problem? How can it be something you can't do despite having the skills? Ah, uh, no, well... Ungak took a deep breath. The materials to make the soul vitality pill are ridiculously expensive. What? Money? Hyunyoung's expression, which had been irritable, quickly calmed down. Hyunyoung had no choice but to be serious regarding the sex finances. If we want to mass produce the soul vitality pill, we would have to sell Mount Hua itself. It would be impossible to do this with just our small business in Huam village. Hyunyoung's face contorted. Why are the materials so expensive? The, they are bound to be expensive. Think about it. The Shaolin sect is overflowing with money, so why do they make so few pills? With these materials, a top sect could try and negotiate to have it done at an acceptable price. Yaksun could use the sect's materials without wasting them and make the pill, and it would be hard for others to try the same since they would have to spend ten times as much. Hyunyoung took a deep breath. All right. So you're saying we can't make it because we don't have enough money? Yes. Just how expensive can it be? Manhua no longer lacks money. So... Hyunyoung's eyes, which had roughly imagined the price, began to tremble. How much? Ugh. Hyunyoung, who regretted hearing the answer, looked at Hyunjong and spoke. S Sec leader, th that thing needs to be thrown away right now. That damn thing is going to destroy Manhua. That old man Yaksun must have been senile. What bullshit pill or medicine or whatever. That's no treasure. It's poison. Poison. Hyunjong looked at Hyunyoung with a confused face. Is it that difficult? It's not just difficult. It would be difficult just to make even a single pill with Manhua's current finances. To make a single one, we would need to sell all our assets. We would need to turn into beggars and go rob others. Maybe even the beggars' union would feel bad hearing this. Hyunyoung was speaking while frothing at the mouth. <sighs> this can never be done. I was hopeful at first, but the roots of Manhua that we tried so hard to save until now will be pulled out after finally being rebuilt. As the head of finance, I will never allow this. <sighs> Hyunjung groaned at Hyunjung's extreme reaction. Another chance for Manhua to leap forward was stifled because of money. Chong Myung, who was listening quietly till there, spoke calmly. Oh, then it's fine. Huh? Hyunyoung looked at Chong Myung. Money is the problem, right? R right. Chong Myung chuckled. Then it's fine. What are you talking about? Receiving everyone's attention, Chong Myung touched his stomach and then suddenly moved his hand to the left and spread open his clothing. Something round quickly poured out. Hyunyoung's eyes widened as if they were about to come out, seeing what fell on the floor. Hey! 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 That! Nightstones! These are... Chongmyung smiled. We're rich! Hyunyoung, who was looking at Chongmyung in silence, muttered unconsciously, You really are the god of wealth. The more he got to know him, the less he understood about Chongmyung.
Chapter 172 Once they get hit, they're bound to move. The preparations for the Soul Vitality Pill began quickly. First, it was decided that they would leave the task of buying the ingredients and collecting the materials that were needed to the Unha Guild. It was because the Unha Merchant Guild had an extensive information network, as well as a belief that Man Hua would be able to get things done. Thanks to that, Huang Zhongyi, who was in Hualm, was summoned to Mount Hua. All, all of this. Seeing the list of the ingredients needed, Huang Zhongyi was shocked. Where are you even going to use all these items? Hyun Yong smiled brightly. Don't be surprised. A Mount Hua is slowly building back its foundation, so we are trying to recreate the pills of our sect. By pills, you mean... Can there be anything else other than the Supreme Pill? Ah, Hyun Yong's lips twitched. He didn't think that the Unha Guild would become hostile to Mount Hua, but that didn't mean that he was going to treat them like family. If the term Soul Vitality Pill goes out, I can't even imagine what would happen. For now, we will have to hide it from everyone. The people who went to the Sword Tomb went to get divine weapons, so they didn't know of the pill in the book. But still, if the Beggars Union and the Wudang sect came to know that Mount Hua had managed to get it, then they wouldn't stay still. So hiding it was the right thing. So procuring these things should be all. Yes, and just one more thing. There's something else? Hyun Yong opened his mouth in a calm tone. I hope that the word of the fact that we are able to get back on our legs doesn't leak out. Why? Why? Hyun Yong licked his lips. Gang Ho is a ruthless place, right? Now Mount Hua is attracting the attention of many sects who have heard about the incident with the Zhongnam sect. And don't we have a slight problem with Wudang too now? Right. Huang Zhongyi nodded his head softly. That was definitely true. The reputation of Mount Hua, which was heightened by the rumors of the Zhongnam sect being disgraced at the conference, once again proved their strength in Nanyang. Not to mention the fact that the disciples of Mount Hua had defeated the Wudang disciples. I... can I ask another thing? Yes, please ask me what you want. I was wondering if the rumors about some disciples of Mount Hua entering the sword tomb was true. It isn't. Ah. Oh. Huang Zhongyi nodded his head. It is definitely understandable. Rumors about Mount Hua's work in Nanyang had already begun to spread in Hualm. Rumors had it that the disciples of Mount Hua had rescued the people from a crisis within the sword tomb which was collapsing, and another rumor that they defeated many famous people in the sword tomb was also going around. In particular, the name that spread immensely was the name of Mount Hua's divine dragon, Chong Myung, who had earned the title of one of the best youngest martial artists in the world due to his actions in the conference with the Zhongnam sect, had been slowly moving away from the minds of the public because of the fact that it had happened two years ago. However, thanks to his performance in Nanyang this time, his name was rising up again. It would just be an exaggerated rumor to say that he is on par with the elders of the Wudang sect. But at the very least, it must mean that he showed enough dignity to stand tall in the dire situation. If so, he could understand why Hyun Yong was trying to be cautious. How much stronger would Mount Hua rise on top of its already rising reputation as a formidable force? Regardless of whether it was a sect that liked or hated Mount Hua, they would start getting nervous. Don't worry, Elder. Trust is the most important thing for a merchant, and I have learned that understanding the wishes of other, and I have learned that understanding the wishes of our customers is very important. <laughs> that is why I trust the young lord, right? But, hmm? Huang Zhongyi opened his mouth. To get all the items that you need, the amount isn't small. Huang Zhongyi, who was someone who knew the financial condition of Mount Hua, had no choice but to ask this. But Hyun Yong's reaction was unexpected. Ah, yes, the money! <clears throat> Huang Zhongyi raised his head in shock at Hyun Yong, who turned his head a little to the side. Had he heard it wrong? Huang Zhongyi tilted his head and asked again. Uh, so, the money... <clears throat> money! 
Right. The money doesn't have to be a concern. It will be paid right away. <clears throat> I'll pay the money now. Hong jong -gi's face darkened. Pay it now? He was going to pay up front for such costly things. Uh, from where did you get that much amount? <laughs> the wealth of Mount Hua is far greater than what the young lord knows. <laughs> Hyun Yong forced a laugh from his mouth. There is a god of wealth in our sect. So much money is not a problem. <laughs> he tried to keep a calm face as much as he could, but he couldn't shackle the joy that was blooming within him. The corner of his lips were twitching to smile, and a laugh escaped from his lips. Now, here! Hyun Yong held out a box to Huang Zhonggi, and Huang Zhonggi was confused as he took the box. This is... Open it! Huang Zhonggi carefully opened it, and light shone straight at his eyes. Th this Huang Zhongyi's eyes widened at what he saw. Aren't these night stones? Right! Huang Zhongyi's mouth, which had opened, stayed silent for long. No, how could you get so many? They were the night stones which were in the lamps in the sword tomb and a single one of them was treated to be more expensive than jewels of the same size. How did these people have so many pieces of such a rare item? Although Huang Zhonggi had seen a lot of wealth, it was his first time seeing nightstones in such large quantities. Isn't even one of these known to be a supreme item? Looking at his reaction, Hyun Yong smiled. I don't think the young lord is someone who wouldn't know the value of this thing. Please put a reasonable price on them. This should work, right? Huang Zhongyi's body trembled. The instinct and morality of a merchant were colliding within him. We cannot let them leave us. Huang Zhongyi bit his lips slightly and quickly finished his thoughts. Not at all, Elder. We will do a detailed appraisal first, but I am sure that just half of this is enough to buy the items you requested. Is that so? Hyun Yong knew the actual value of the nightstones, but he wanted to hear it from the mouth of Huang Zhongyi directly. I guess they can be trusted. Huang Zhongyi's calculations weren't much different from Hyun Yong's. No, his own thoughts were more generous than Hyun Yong. Then, take them, pay the price for the items, and return the rest to Mount Hua. You, you're going to entrust all of this to me? <laughs> Mount Hua and the Inha Guild. Aren't we like brothers? If we cannot believe Anna, then who can we believe? Hyun Yong and Huang Zhonggi exchanged glances. They might have different thoughts behind each other, but their gazes now were full of trust. Then the fee, as consciously as possible. Conscience, conscientiously, nothing was being extremely stressed on. Then I will do it. As soon as the evaluation is done, I will store them safely, and as soon as the purchase is done, they will be brought back to Mount Hua, along with the items. Do you want them changed into money or slips? Money would be nice. Yes, Elder. Huang Zhongyi stood up and quickly picked up the box. Then I will head down and get them appraised as soon as possible. Huh? You didn't drink the tea? If I stay here for tea, despite the riches that I can potentially make, then I cannot be called a merchant. We will send you the good news as soon as possible. Don't forget what I requested. It will not spread out. Of course, the public won't even know where I got the nightstones either. Huang Zhonggi quickly understood the intentions of Hyun Yong. Then, thank you. I will head back. Huang Zhonggi went out, and Hyun Yong covered his mouth, and his shoulders trembled. <laughs> Unbearable laughter erupted. <laughs> the shoulders showed no signs of stopping. <laughs> Thanks to that lucky bastard, I'm able to do what I've always dreamed of doing. Handing over a large sum of money to a merchant who visited Mount Hua and having him buy things he wanted was a lifelong wish for Hyun Yong. However, that dream was being fulfilled on a much larger scale than he had even thought possible in his life. <clears throat> What a nice child. I think I should go search for a dragon and roast and feed him. A dragon couldn't probably be found, so a cow should suffice. A happy smile spread across Hyun Yong's lips. Soon, Hyun Yong's eyes, which were joyous, 
turned a little serious. With this, Manhua will spread its wings wide. What Manhua lacked the most was someone who had great internal key. Since they were a martial sect, they did everything they could to recover their internal key, but there was only so much they could do. Talent and training couldn't keep up with the gap that had been created by the collapse of the sect. From Mount Hua's side, where the second and third class disciples should be the center, the situation of the undisciples had been a problem, since they were the ones who had to lead the sect as teachers by giving up on learning. And now, if they could get a whiff of this pill and feed the disciples, then the problem would be solved to some extent if at all it wasn't entirely. And with that, Mount Hua would be able to leap once again. Kenyong jumped up from his place and headed for the sect leader's residence. He had to report everything that had just transpired with the young lord of the Unha guild. Sect leader, are you in there? Hyunyung, who opened the door without even waiting to listen for an answer, suddenly flinched. Uh, this. Hyunyung gently lowered the towel in his hand. In front of him, there was a box with things which weren't shiny enough for them to be cleaned. Things went well then. <laughs> Hyunyung smiled. Hyunjung, who tried his best to look dependable in front of the disciples, always made sure that his sadness and worries would never be spread or be identified by them. Then how happy should the man be for him to not care about who came in and was still openly wiping that box? Hide it somewhere safe. What are we to do if we lose that? Aren't my hands the safest place in Mount Hua? Shouldn't it be the hands of Chongmyung that is the safest? Hyunjung went silent. Listening to it, it seemed right. Anyway, the work with the young lord went well. I think we will have the ingredients a lot sooner than we thought. Oh, is that so? <laughs> it would be nice if everything worked out like this for now. <laughs> Tears were welling up in the eyes of Hyunjung and Hyunyung, who were looking at each other with smiles. This was something they wouldn't have dared imagine a few years ago. Back then, whenever they sat in this very room, they had no choice but to hear things which hurt them the most. They never even dreamt that a day would come when they would look at each other and laugh in the very same room. In just a couple of years, their situation had changed a lot. Such a strange one. This is the relationship between Tao and Ki. Hyunyong's face darkened at it. Where can we find pure Tao and Ki relations? <laughs> Don't keep looking from the sidelines. The Dao doesn't come because we simply follow the path of a good man. Sometimes, Dao comes just by keeping your innate nature. Stop talking nonsense! And what will you be giving Chongmyung this time? Uh, huh? A prize! Reward! Does it make sense for us not to give him a prize after what he did? Even cows are fed to get them to work! Shouldn't we give Chongmyung a decent reward for him to go out and earn more name for us? Last time, we gave him nothing for earning so much, and I remember clearly what happened. This time, I cannot let you give him simple rewards. Hyunjung looked at Hyunyung a bit shocked. I am not complaining about it. My curiosity is making me ask. Whose side are you on? Is it my side or that child? Why would you ask me that? Of course I am... Uh, Sect Leader Sayong, my mood is turning sour. At Hyunjung's intense reaction, Hyunjung's face softened. Sorry, look at me, after all the years we spent together. Of course it is Chongmyung, it is that child. What did the Sect Leader even do for me? Ah, he's on his side. I was in charge of most things for the sake of the Sect Leader, and I couldn't even get married, and I ended up growing old like this. How can I even take your side? I couldn't even marry. I couldn't even have a daughter. So now, I can't even get Chongmyung married into my family. Uh, no. Think about the age. If it is your daughter, she'll be too old. Then granddaughter. Hyunyung changed his words right away. Anyway, I will not let things pass this time. Make sure to think about what kind of reward he should be given. Shouldn't that soul vitality pill also belong to Chongmyung? Why is the sect leader constantly holding on to it like it's your own? First, give one pill to him, then... Clack. Suddenly, they heard the sound of Hyun-sang coming in and pulling Hyun-yong out. What? What now? 
Why? Sec leader, think about what I said. If you can just let go of my ear. Uh, 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 uh. Thud. The door slammed shut, and a gust of wind rustled Hyunjong's hair. <laughs> Hyunjong smiled. This is good. Ah, it is a good thing. But strangely, these days, my authority seems to have fallen a bit. Am I just feeling things? Chapter 173 once they get hit, they are bound to move. Spring came to Mount Hua. Uh, but hadn't spring come a while ago? No, no. The spring which came now was different from the spring season. Then what kind of spring is this? <laughs> Hyun Young looked around with the softest smile and warmest eyes. If he was normally a gentle person, then this would be fine. However, this was a person who normally walked around with bloodshot eyes and a frown on his face that was sufficient to instill fear in the disciples of Mount Hua. <laughs> There's still money left. Then, with this, we can replace the gate with a new one. <laughs> a warm smile and gentle energy radiated from Hyun Yong's body. It seemed like he was leaving plum blossoms wherever he was walking, and people were worried that he would suddenly attain some realization of Tao and rise to the top. It wasn't just him. <laughs> Seg leader, isn't the weather so nice today? Rumble. <laughs> right. Dark clouds are rolling as if it will rain any time now. Such a beautiful sight. I wish every day was this beautiful. Hyunjong and Hyunsang were laughing as they watched the dark clouds coming in. And they too, like Hyunjong, were giving out gentle energy and walking around Mount Hua. What was more frightening was that they looked at all the disciples they were running into with eyes full of love and warmth. The love was oozing from their bodies. It looked like the elders of Mount Hua weren't in good health. Even Inam would say weird things and laugh, so everyone genuinely worried about what was going to happen to Mount Hua. Why are they all like this? I know they are acting in such a manner since things are good, but how good should things be for them to be like this? The disciples of Mount Hua, who didn't know the full story of what happened, continued to suffer from these weird feelings. And among them, the one who confused them the most was Chong Myung. Chong Myung leisurely walked around the mountain with the expression of a puppy sleeping in peace. However, at least they could understand all of this. But Chong Myung... Huh? You skipped training? Ah, it's fine. It's totally fine. Things like that can happen. How can a person work hard every day? Rest, rest. There should be days off for us too. Huh? While I was swaying, the cords I installed on the training hall were broken and you didn't get them repaired. <laughs> then just pay for it. Take it easy and take some time for yourself. Did anyone get hurt? <gasps> Chong Myung was pouring out all his kindness to everyone in Mount Hua as if he had reincarnated as a gentleman. However, the disciples who saw all of this could not act relaxed around Chong Myung. What is with that brat? Huh? I don't know. More and more anxiousness kept piling up. I heard people do such things when it is time for them to die. Did he get a disease from somewhere? Get a disease? That bastard? Diseases only come for humans. He is more poisonous than any disease that a human can get. I can relate to that statement. If it was any other day than the moment they had skipped training, Chong Myung would have come to break their heads. Similarly, if he had heard that the training facility cords were broken and weren't repaired, then he would have brought the broken cords and tied them around the necks of the disciples and hung them from a cliff. And now he was worried if someone got hurt. Did he finally go mad? This has to be a trap. We need to get those things repaired by today itself. 
If not, tomorrow our heads will be broken. I'd rather get hit than see his face like that. Unable to endure this horrific change, the disciples of Mount Hua decided to ask someone who knew what had happened during the journey. Sayong! Baekchun Sayong! What the hell did you do out there? Baekchun smiled bitterly at the second-class disciples led by Baeksang. What do you mean what we did out there? No matter how we look, everything is strange. No, it is more than strange. It is very suspicious. Chong Myung, he is glad we aren't hurt. Him, the reincarnation of the devil. That is surely a surprise. Baek Chun smiled as if it was no big deal. Can it not be because everyone is in a good mood? Right, it can't... Right, it can be that, but it makes us people who are watching them always be on edge. Do not worry, Baek Chun said and continued. It is something that is good for everyone, including all of you too. But the thing is, the entire matter is confidential for now, so I cannot tell you. Sayong, do you not believe in us anymore? Baek Chun's eyes twitched at the dissatisfaction which came from the disciples and the second class disciples flinched. You are complaining about this. Baekson trembled. No, what is it with these people? Where did that gentle Baekchun Sion go? He resembles that brat so much now. So much. Baekchun shook his head. Is there someone else who wants to complain? No. Baekchun clicked his tongue and then looked back and said, I will let you know when the time comes. I know you are all curious, but for now, we need to do our duties and wait. Do you understand? Yes, Sayong, but... Mm -hmm. What now? How were the Wudang disciples? At Baekseong's words, Baekchun's lips changed. This Sayong of yours broke Jinhyun of Wudang. Jinhyun of Wudang? Isn't he the famous sword dragon? Sayong took that person down? Baekchun let out a low sigh. <sighs> the sword dragon was strong, but he wasn't yet worthy of that title. Even among you, there will be many who can be his opponent. Eh? Only Sion could have done it. We couldn't have. I am not saying empty words. Baekchun looked at his sages. <sighs> Even if I say it, it will come out weird. At some point, Manhua became strong. In the past, Manhua used to tremble at just the mention of the name Jungnam sect and now it was able to handle the promising disciples of the Wudang sect. <sighs> it is all thanks to that sly bastard. Then shouldn't Sayong be the one holding the sword dragon title? Baekchun's face contorted. I don't want to take that title. Why? What a glorious title the word dragon is! The title of Mount Hua's divine dragon will still be on top of that. Ah! Oh. That made sense. It wouldn't be good to have a Sajil on top of Sasuk, even if that Sajil wasn't someone who could be called a human. Anyway, don't dwell on such false claims of being weak and just fasten your training. You should be stronger than what you think you are now. They need to be in their best form when taking the soul vitality pill. Baekchun didn't say that to them. There was no need to say it and get them excited without the pill even being reproduced in the sect. And moreover, there was a risk of the information leaking out from the disciples who got excited by the news. Of course, he also wondered how the information would leak when all the disciples stayed on the mountain and weren't allowed to leave. It was a situation where nobody could talk about it even if they wanted to. Um, Sayong. Hmm? That... Is it true that Chung Myung fought with an elder of the Wudang sect on equal footing? Baek Chun's eyebrows trembled. I didn't see it. Uh, then... Baek Chun's brows slightly twisted. Actually, this was something he couldn't say, but it hurt his self-esteem even more to pretend like he didn't know. I don't know if he was on equal footing or not, but when I reached there, it seemed like the two of them were in a fight. And it was also true that Chong Myung did not have a single injury on him. Then, really? Ugh, still, how can... Right, it makes no sense. Their mouths said it wasn't true, but their minds were all speaking differently. If it was that monster, then it was possible. Of course, 
This was far from common sense, but even common sense would run away if it saw him. Beksan tilted his head. That makes no sense. No, wait. If you think about it, Sayong took down the sword dragon. Why bring that up when talking about Chong Myung? Maybe Chong Myung was able to play around because the elder has to be like great Sayong and old. Crack. Beksang realized what he said after the grinding sound came. He turned his pale face and looked at where the sound came from. And in that place was Baekchun. And constantly grinding his teeth, Baekchun moved. Play. <sighs> right. You must have thought that, right? Sayung, calm down for... Calm down. Wow, such a nice word. But right now, I want to try doing something else. I want you people to experience what it is like to play with him. The next moment, Baekchun drew his sword at the speed of lightning and rushed for his sages. And his sages, who were frightened, fled in all directions. No, why does he have to be similar to him? Ah, Sayung, Sayung, the sword, the sword, it hurts. Yu Yisor, who was watching from afar, shook her head and sighed. In such a situation where warmth was spreading throughout Mount Hua like this, an unexpected person visited the mountain. Chong Myung, huh? The sect leader is looking for you. Me? Right, you and Jogul too. At Yun Jong's words, Chong Myung tilted his head, as if thinking whether there was any reason for the sect leader to summon him. All right, let's go. He would know it once he went. Chong Myung followed Yun Jong without another word, and the three reached the residence of the sect leader, and Yun Jong said, Sect leader, it's me, Yun Jong. I've brought Chong Myung and Jogul. Come in. Yes. Yun Jong carefully opened the door and went in with Chong Myung following and quickly checked the people inside. There was no one special and it was just the usual bunch. Hyun Jong, Hyun Sang, Hyun Yong, Eunam, Baek Chun, and Yu Yi Sol. Apart from them. Oh? Elder Huang Munyak, the head of the Unha, brightly smiled as he looked at Chong Myung. Young disciple, how have you been? Oh! It's been so long. How are you? <laughs> what would happen? With the help from the young disciple, I am now able to live comfortably. You really look like it. You seem to have gotten younger. Huang Munyak smiled, but it wasn't empty words. The man did look a lot younger than before. It was as if, after getting up from his deathbed, he had regained his health. His complexion was turning better and even his hair seemed to be turning darker. The words, looking young, wasn't an exaggeration. Sit down. Yes. All three of them sat without a question, and Hyun Jung spoke. As you asked, I have summoned Chung Myung, the Na Merchant Guild head. What did you want to say? At his words, Huang Mun Yak sighed. The reason I came to the sect leader personally was because of the work commissioned from Mount Hua to the Unha Guild. Were there any problems? Rather than a problem, Huang Munyak had a slightly hesitant face and with a sigh. Sect leader. He bowed, unable to show his face. I apologize, but with the current power of the Unha Merchant Guild, I don't think we can fulfill the task Mount Hua gave us. Huh? Chong Myung's eyes widened. What was he trying to say? Ah, it cannot be done with the power of Anna. Huang Munyak had a bitter smile as he said, I have no excuses. The task Man Hua commissioned to us cannot be done, not only by the Anha Guild, but any other merchant guild in the world. Huh? It cannot? Then what of the Soul Vitality Pill? Huh? It couldn't be done? Ugh! In the eyes of Chong Myung, the flame blazed once again. Chapter 174 Once they get hit, they're bound to move. 
Wait, nothing in this world is impossible. If it cannot be done, then we need to make it happen. Chong Myung shouted, making Huang Munyak flustered. If anyone else had said this, he might have been displeased. But this was Chong Myung, and Huang Munyak had received so much from him. Young disciple, let's calm down. I am very calm, right? Tone it down. Hearing Hyung Jung's calm order, Baek Chun and Yun Jung grabbed Chung Myung. <coughs> Chung Myung groaned. Hyun Jung looked at Huang Munyak and spoke. Is it because of the ice crystals? There was a sense of concern in his voice. Ice crystals came from the deepest and roughest areas of the North Sea. They were the most precious and difficult ingredient to obtain among those needed for the pill. What's more, the entire area was under the supervision of the North Sea Ice Palace. It wasn't something that could be easily purchased, even if one had the money. Huang Munyak smiled bitterly. It's true that it's extremely difficult to obtain them, but with the Inha Guild's power, we can get as many ice crystals as we want. Then what is the issue? The troublesome ingredient isn't the ice crystal, it's the purple wood grass. Mm -hmm. Hyun Jung tilted his head. He did ask him to get purple wood grass too, but it didn't seem like an expensive item, so he didn't pay much attention to it. Is it a precious item? Something too expensive to get? Not at all. Of course, it is a rare item that can only be found in certain places, but its effectiveness is known to be lacking, and it can hardly be considered a medicinal herb. Then why? Huang Munyak took a deep breath. Sec leader, you must know about the five palaces beyond the Great Wall. Of course. The five palaces beyond the Great Wall. The five factions outside the Central Plains. Each of these factions has similar power to the sects among the nine great sects and has formed an alliance together. The South Sea Sun Palace, North Sea Ice Palace, Potala Palace, Nanman Beast Palace, and Mara Blood Palace. The alliance of these five sects was known as the Great Palaces Beyond the Great Wall. The problem is the Nanman Beast Palace. Hyun Jung frowned. What the hell is happening with the Nanman Beast Palace? As if Huang Munyak could read his mind, he immediately began to explain. This purple wood grass is native to the deep valleys inside Yunnan. In the past, there were no merchants or others to speak of, so it was a bit of a hassle to go there directly, but it wasn't difficult to obtain. However, the path is completely blocked now. The path is blocked? What do you mean? The Nanman Beast Palace I mentioned before is blocking the road. To be precise, they are not only blocking the road to the purple woodgrass, but also preventing the people of the Central Plains from spreading their influence. No, does it make any sense for a sect to block the path? Huang Munyak smiled bitterly. Nanman is a place where common sense doesn't apply. Martial artists and armed groups there occupy the land and rule like kings. The power of the nation cannot control them. Hyun Jung frowned. It wasn't completely nonsensical to him. In the first place, didn't the Potala Palace and North Sea Ice Palace rule like royalty among their regions? It wouldn't be strange if the Nanman Beast Palace was the same. Why are they blocking the road? The relationship between the Nanman Beast Palace and the Central Plains deteriorated quickly ever since the downfall of the demonic sect in the past. The five palaces between the Great Wall requested help from the Central Plains when the demonic sect first began to sweep through their realm, but not a single sect stood up to assist. Now, this is the result. Tch! Then our blood was left to spill later, because there was no one left to help once the demonic sect began moving north. As a result of that, Nanman Bee's palace cut all communications with the people of the Central Plains once the battle with the demonic sect ended. Now, no one from our side is allowed access. Huang Munyak sighed. Thanks to this, the damage wasn't limited to us. We lost the most famous Yunnan tea. This used to be one of the largest sources of income for merchants in Shangxi and Sichuan. 
but the trade route with Yunnan was blocked, so it was inevitable to suffer such losses. In other words, Baekchun summarized the situation. They're strong enough to make the merchants all give up on such overwhelming profits. Right. Hyunjong's face went stiff. Sec leader, we can help you with the other items, but this is out of our hands. I apologize again. Raise your head, Guildhead. How could this be your fault? Hyunjong comforted him, but Hyunjong didn't know how to calm his face. He thought that Mount Hua would grow stronger, but he quickly came upon an unexpected wall. Medical head. Yes, Sec Leader. Ungak immediately bowed his head. Tell me, even without the purple wood grass, can you manufacture the soul? Sec Leader. Ungak sighed and gulped. A pill isn't just something made by combining ingredients. When every ingredient is perfectly mixed together, they are fused to make the perfect pill, and a synergy occurs that requires everything to be complete. It would be hard to expect a tenth of success if we're missing even a single ingredient. I would rather eat the raw ingredients than to prepare an imperfect pill. Without the purple woodgrass, I cannot make it. Everyone's face darkened. It was then. So, an eerie voice that seemed as if it had escaped from hell. As expected, the voice came from Chongmyung. Those Nanman Beast Palace bastards aren't giving me my soul. No, they aren't giving me the ingredients to make my pill? Chongmyung's face was so blisteringly red that it seemed like it would explode. No, those fucking bastards! Stop him! Yes! When Chongmyung was about to throw a fit, the people around him rushed together and pressed him down. Let go! Let me go! These crazy bastards must have gone mad! It makes no sense! They're making such a big deal out of selling some grass? C calm down! So many people are blocking our way! What can we do? Block? Block? If we hit them once, the path is bound to open up. Let's see if they come to block the road once their leader's head is broken. Chongmyung was losing it. Ugh. Chongmyung threw away those who were pushing him down and got up. Hyunjong flinched when he saw those burning eyes. Sec leader! Uh, why? What more are you going to do, you brat? I'm going to Yunnan. I'm going to break those bastards down and bring us the grass. Baekchun and Yunjong were terrified and grabbed him back. Brat, this is the Nanman Beast Palace, one of the five great palaces behind the Great Wall. Not even ten lives would be enough if you went against them. Chongmyung calmly said, Why are you worried about my life? Those bastards should be the ones worrying about their necks. It was spoken with such calm confidence that it almost felt reasonable, like it made sense. At that moment, Jogul, who was silently watching, spoke up. Guildhead, Hmm? Huh? If Yunnan only blocks entry to people from the Central Plains, can we just hire people from the other regions, like the West? Can't people who are not from the Central Plains enter Yunnan? Oh. Huang Munyak's eyes widened. Wow, smart. That's our Jogul. That Sayong seems to be using his head for once. Jogul wanted to respond and ask if the others had been too thoughtless, but he decided to let their remarks slide and kept his mouth shut. Huang Munyak shook his head. We did try something like that before, but we failed. The Western traders in Yunnan are made to take an oath not to hand over any items to us. It's not impossible to find people willing to sell, but they won't put things in our hands so easily because they'll lose their heads if they get caught. I see. And... Huang Munyak took a deep breath. The purple wood grass is located deep inside Yunnan, right next to the Nanman Beast Palace's territory. This is a place where even Westerners are prohibited from entering, so it's impossible to obtain it through such methods. Even within Yunnan, the only people allowed to access that place all belong to the Nanman Beast Palace. Jogul bowed his head as if he understood. The eyes of Huang Munyak were observing him. He's someone with the mind of a merchant. However, this side didn't just have this guy with brains, but also the poisonous one too. That's enough then, Chongmyung said while grinding his teeth. 
I'm going to run to Yunnan and tell those bastards to give me that grass. It's the Beast Palace. So what? I'm from Mount Hua. Seeing Cho Myung speak like that, Hyun Jung's heart swelled with emotions. He was proud to see how the disciple spoke about his sect, but he was concerned about sending him and their lack of countermeasures. But it felt like the conclusion was reached. We need to obtain the purple wood grass. It would be impossible to make the soul vitality pill without it. This was something that had to be done for the sake of Man Hua. Hyun Jung, who made up his mind, looked at Chong Myung. Chong Myung. Yes, sect leader. Can you do it? Hyun Jung's face turned serious. This is extremely dangerous, but it's also necessary. So I want to ask you, Will you be able to retrieve the grass and return safely without getting hurt? Chong Myung smiled and spoke. Sec leader. Yes. I'm Chong Myung. Hyun Jung's eyes shook. The moment he heard those words, trust flowed through his body. Yes, this child is Chong Myung. Who could he believe in if he didn't believe in Chong Myung and Man Hua? This child would be the one leading Man Hua. Of course, to trust. Don't worry, I will crack their skulls and come back with the grass. Shouldn't they at least be reasonable and do things that make sense? Did we ask them for gold or give up their throne? We just wanted some simple grass, but they blocked the path? I'm going to kill them. As I set them on fire, I'll stuff their snouts full of grass. <sighs> Trust. How quickly that just died. How did someone like this come from our sect? Hyun Jung, who calmed his trembling face, turned his head. Hyun Yong. Yes, sect leader. Quickly, get things ready for the children. Sect leader. Hyun Yong's eyes slightly shook, but Hyun Jung firmly responded. I am sending Chong Myung to Yunnan. Yes. And he looked at Chong Myung. You need to succeed. Don't worry, I'm going to bring back an entire field of purple woodgrass. For some reason, Hyun Jung felt sorry for the people of Yunnan. <clears throat> at that moment, Hyun Jung, who was standing, glanced at Hyun Jung and gave him a subtle hint. Upon noticing the glance, Hyun Jung steadily got up from his seat. Well, for a moment, I need to go. Hyun Jung and Hyun Jung quickly left the room and moved as far from the hall as they could. It was Hyun Jung that spoke first. What is it? Hyun Jung spoke with a slight frown. Are you going to send that child into another dangerous place alone? I know that it would be best to have some senior take the lead. But as you know, when the children... It's not that! Huh? Hyun Jung spoke with dissatisfaction. If you're sending the children to a dangerous place, shouldn't we be prepared for things to go wrong? Let him have it. It? The pill. The soul vitality pill. Hyun Jung frowned. N no, there's no guarantee that we'll get the purple wood grass or that the pill would be perfect even if we do. So how can we give? Sect leader, since when did you turn into a thief? Thief? Isn't this Mount Hua? Since Chong Myung saved it, doesn't it belong to him? It belongs to the kids who found it all together. And what are you trying to save it for anyway? What do we do if the kids get hurt? Hyun Yong's eyes were blazing. If any of the children got hurt, he would most likely pull Hyun Jung's head out. Feed the children! Feed them the soul vitality pill! Now! Right now! Ah, uh, I get it. They need to eat it, right? Fine, let's feed them. Chapter 175 Once they get hit, they are bound to move. Yoon Jung blinked as he looked at the five soul vitality pills in front of him. This is... Yoon Jung slowly raised his head to look at the sect leader, and Hyun Jung looked at them with the most benevolent expression he could. Eat. The... This... 
Yun Jung, alternated between looking at the pill and Hyun Jung. You mean us? Hyun Jung solemnly nodded very slowly and tried to answer yes. But Hyun Jung, who was next to him, spat out before he could speak. Then what? Should I eat it? Yun Jung looked at Hyun Jung with startled eyes. Isn't that how it should be done? The elders should eat first. Ugh, you're spewing such nonsense. Hyun Jung resolutely cut Yun Jung's words short. What are we going to do after eating this? Wait around until we die of old age? It would be a waste of these things for us to eat them. Everyone was shocked by the statement, but they couldn't refute it. Then Hyun Jung smiled. This soul vitality pill is something you searched for and brought back, so it's natural that you should eat it. Even if it wasn't you, but us who found it, it still has to be you that takes it. Elder, there is no reason to get hung up on this. It's nothing special. Even if you take five pills, there are 15 more left. That's still sufficient for us to study it. No, it's more than sufficient, so don't feel burdened by it. At that time, Hyun Jung added, Finding the purple wood grass in Yunnan won't be easy, so taking this will be of great help to you all. Hyun Jung turned his head and glared at Hyun Jung, but Hyun Jung didn't look at him and simply kept his peaceful smile. It's obvious that I was the one that wanted to give this to them from the start. Just stay put. It's enough already. Can't you save me some face now that I'm giving them pills too? The two elders exchanged glances and communicated through their eyes before coughing in unison. So, we can eat this, right? Chung Myung, who had been silent till then, casually reached out and picked one pill up. Huh! <laughs> Brat, take it easy! Do you know how precious that is? Yeah, 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 yeah! It'll break! It'll break! Yeah, you devil! Chung Myung recoiled from the violent reaction of the people around him. No, how dare you handle that pill like that? Do you even know what kind of pill that is? Even if we sold you, we wouldn't be able to buy that. Chong Myung's eyes grew cold. This disgusting set. Even if you grew up in poverty without any pills. No, even if that was the case, humans are lesser and this pill is greater. How could that be? Ugh. All of this was due to the lack of pills in the sect. This is why, no matter the cost, we need to get those ingredients. It wasn't just for Mount Hua now. This was necessary for the future of Mount Hua. Anyway, I can have this, right? Why won't you answer, sect leader? That... Giving the soul vitality pill to Chung Myung wasn't a waste. Even if they failed to revive the creation method and the 20 remaining pills were all they could use, he still understood that he needed to feed them to the disciples. But we might never have them again. These pills weren't just something used to improve strength. They could also be used as medicine to heal internal injuries that couldn't be treated by any other means. Rather than spending them now, it would be better to feed them later if the kids got hurt. His hard life, which had led Mount Hua for decades, left him unable to overcome his sense of anxiety. If Hyun Yung heard his thoughts, he would curse him out for acting like a beggar. But what could be done? That was the truth. In the future, Mount Hua would surely experience many things and come to suffer more, and the number of children getting injured would increase. Eat it! But Hyun Yung had neither blood nor tears. If we save it forever, it turns to ash. Don't worry and just eat it. That... Am I wrong, sect leader? Of course. That's how it should be. You need to eat it. I'm the sect leader here. Me. Chong Myung, who wasn't interested in the subtle exchange of thoughts between the two elders, gently nodded and immediately put it into his mouth. Baek Chun, who had been quietly listening to the conversation, also got up and bowed to the two elders. I, Baek Chun, will never forget the grace that the sect leader and elder have shown. Grace? Hyun Young smiled warmly upon seeing his reaction. This kid was always polite. However, Hyun Young felt much better about people like Chung Myung rather than those polite people that would keep their courtesy as Mount Hua became poor. See, 
Wasn't Chongmyung drooling in anticipation of taking the pill while the others were still unsure? Right, right. My eyes don't hurt even seeing you eat something so valuable, you brat. Eat it. You need to eat and grow stronger to earn us more money. I will never forget the grace shown. I will never forget the grace shown. Except for Chongmyung, the rest followed Baekchun and bowed. Hyunyung, who was too lazy to return the courtesy, looked at Hyunjung. Get up. Yes, sick leader. The best way for you to pay us is to consume the pill as soon as possible and relieve us of our worries. We will do as we were told. Baekchun picked up the pill with slightly nervous eyes. This, the soul vitality pill, a pill that was known to be even better than the Shaolin sex medicine. Such an enormously amazing pill that was rumored to push people into higher realms. The day had come for them to receive it. Is this really all thanks to him? Baekchun smiled bitterly. What kind of life would they all be living if Chongmyung hadn't come to Mount Hua? He couldn't even imagine it. Let's not think about it. This wasn't the time to get emotional. It was important to take the pill, absorb the elixir completely, and make it his power. Baekchun sat cross-legged with a slightly nervous face and brought the pill to his lips. Chomp. And he put it into his mouth. The pill melted the instant it entered his mouth and quickly slid down his throat. A clear feeling of refreshment spread throughout his body as if taking a sip of pure water from the deepest valley in the mountains. But the water that was falling drop by drop soon turned into a stream and then grew into a terrifying waterfall as it began to swirl inside Baekchun's body. He trembled at the overwhelming weight of it. This is the soul vitality pill. The key rushed in like an explosion. It was hard to understand how eating one small pill could produce such results. Concentrate. Baekchun instantly abandoned all other thoughts. He started to focus on his dungeon and guided the growing key from the soul vitality pill. Swish. It felt like a dam had broken inside his body. The rushing key was violently washing away the impurities within his body and expanding his key. Baekchun had begun this when he tried to lead the key, but the soul vitality pill's key quickly escaped his control and began to roam about at its own discretion. However, rather than feeling a sense of crisis, Baekchun felt indescribably exhilarated. It felt like his entire body was filled with key. He worried that he would lose his mind as he felt enchanted by the immense key that he might never be able to feel again. The key was widening the meridians and opening the smallest blood vessels one after another. Even the clogged meridians were being cleared. Baekchun felt like he was completely reborn. Everything could be felt so vividly. Every single detail, even down to his fingertips, was clear to him. Every fiber of his being felt the fresh sensation of his body being reborn. This is the power of the soul vitality pill. Only then did he realize why so many people were ready to risk their lives for even a single pill. No matter how hard a person trained, they could never feel like this on their own. There were some things that human effort alone could not accomplish. Now, the key from the soul vitality pill was casually doing what humans were unable to do for themselves. But, <clears throat> this is too much. The key from the pill was still overflowing within his body, but he couldn't absorb all of it and make it his own. Basically, the pill's energy would remain trapped within his body and slowly be absorbed over time. Baekchun was no longer greedy and slowly gathered the key. He knew that greed was always a shortcut to failure. The key from the pill swirling around his body began to rush into the dungeon following his guidance. After confirming that the key from the soul vitality pill had settled in the corner of his dungeon, Baekchun slowly opened his eyes. Well, and his body shook. His body felt like it was full of key more than he had ever felt before. It feels like he could get anything done so long as he put his mind to it. The pill's overflowing vitality gave him a tremendous sense of confidence. Sec leader, I... 
It was the moment when Baekchun, who trembled with emotions, tried to say something nice. Segli, huh? Baekchun tilted his head and looked at Hyunjung. Um. Hyunjung looked a little weird. It was unlike his usual expressions, where he solemnly kept his mouth shut or had a benevolent smile. Uncharacteristically, he was looking at something with his mouth and eyes open wide. Where is he looking? It felt odd. He was looking a little above, a little higher than where a person would be standing. Why the hell was he looking at a place like that in a room where everyone was sitting down? Not just Hyunjung, but even Hyunjung's gaze was fixed on the same point. Baekchun followed their line of sight in confusion. And... Th this crazy bastard! Wh what is this? Unsurprisingly, he was startled and stepped back. At the end of that gaze, of course, was Chongmyung. However, it was difficult to say he was simply at the end of the gaze. Because that gaze had ended near the ceiling. Why is there a man floating in the air? Baekchun was shocked. Sitting cross-legged, Chongmyung was floating in the air. Hyunjong and Hyunyong couldn't take their eyes off this bizarre sight. I've heard that masters who reached amazing heights could float in the air when cultivating. But he had never seen such a thing himself, so he thought it was just flowery words made up to make others look good. He never imagined he would see it with his own two eyes. Of course, it cannot be said that it happened because Chongmyung's skills had reached the extreme. It would be more correct to consider it a temporary event in the process of Chongmyung absorbing the enormous key from the soul vitality pill. However, even knowing that didn't change the fact that they were seeing something spectacular. Huh? What is this? Oh my god! One after another, the others all opened their eyes and everyone felt equally shocked, but the surprise didn't die yet. Goo. Suddenly, a five-color radiance shone from Chongmyung's body. Five. Five key Jowon. Ah, uh, no, it seems a bit different. Hyunjong looked carefully. This was something that didn't fit with any knowledge they had. But one thing was certain. I can feel that something amazing is happening. Go. At that moment, the air around Chongmyung began to get sucked in. Do, 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 do. At the same time, the room they were in began to shake. Eh? eh? Is it going to collapse? G get out! Get out right now! At that moment, Hyunyung shouted and everyone began to run. Baekchun cried out without realizing it. No! That crazy bastard can't even cultivate without causing trouble! He's seriously a troublemaker. Uh, I'm going crazy. It was a statement that echoed the feelings of everyone there. Chapter 176 It is better than dying from frustration. Begsang let out a low sigh as he looked at Mount Hua. I feel like the atmosphere is rather restless lately. To be more precise, it felt like something was floating around. Thinking about it, the atmosphere had been strange ever since Chongmyung entered Mount Hua, but it suddenly got worse after Chongmyung and his party returned from Nanyang recently. It was clear that the elders were excited about something. Well, he must have done something great. None of the second-class disciples would deny the power Chongmyung had. After two years of experience under him, they had no choice but to understand it, even if they didn't want to know. Besides, he also received something from Chongmyung. Quite frankly, how could the days when all they had to eat was grass and all they had to wear were worn-out uniforms even be compared to now when they wear fine clothes and eat meat until they're tired? No matter how hard they trained, even masters couldn't sustain themselves on dew alone. 
it couldn't be denied that these days were a hundred times better than when the sect was suffering from financial difficulties. But sometimes he missed the silence of the past Mount Hua. At that time, Mount Hua had a feeling of purity. Maybe I'm thinking to rumble. Baekson looked up at the sudden sound. Is it about to rain? There was thunder. Rumble. What? Baekson strangely felt like it came from the side. Well, it wasn't out of the ordinary to hear thunder nearby when they lived so high up on the mountain. Rumble. Baekson turned his head. No, I don't think it's thunder. Baekson's eyes opened wide as he looked around for the source of the sound. What is that? Dust was rising from the residence of the set leader. It wasn't just an expression. Dust was literally rising. D- this. Rumble. As the thunderous sound rang again, the entire residence shook. Uh, I can't just go there, right? It was definitely coming from the residence of the set leader. And... Ah! No! What's going on? Please, please, don't overdo it. Please. Baekchun, Yu yi his juniors, Hyunjong, and an elder escaped from the residence at the speed of light. Baekchun was stunned by the unexpected sight. What now? He didn't have much time to think. Rumble. The sound of thunder came crashing down as the entire building collapsed. The roof tiles scattered in all directions and the pillars fell over. Oh, that was a place that should never collapse like that. That was the house of the set leader. It was the most important. Baekseong murmured to himself unconsciously as he looked at the ruined residence with blank eyes. Maybe the sect is really going well. Really well. Distinguishedly well. Hyunjong's eyebrows convulsed at the sight of his pavilion collapsing. That he had nothing to say. <coughs> ah. Hyunjong, who was coughing next to him, frowned. What kind of forefathers does that bastard have to take down something like this? No, bastard. My house is the one collapsing. Do you have to act like this? Ah. It looks like we'll have to build a new one. Hyunjong's ears, which had been slightly irritated, twitched. A new house? Oh, that sounds good. Getting a new house was definitely a good thing. But Hyunjong couldn't determine if he should be sad that the old house collapsed or happy that he would be getting a new one. Oh, no. That wasn't important now. Hyunjung shook his head and straightened his neck. What happened to Chongmyung? Huh? Where? Are you getting old? There! In there! Hyunjung narrowed his eyes and looked to where Hyunjung was pointing to. The wreckage of the collapsed house shook a couple of times as a man crawled out from it. Hey! Why did this collapse? Who was it? What kind of bastards did this? It was you, you brat. You did it. You did. Chong Myung emerged with a fit of tantrums and clicked his tongue at the collapsed house. How weak did the building have to be for this to collapse? The builders must have skimped on some materials. Hyun Jong sighed as if there was no way he could answer that. Sect leader Sayong, wasn't that the five Chi Cho Yon? Well, Hyun Jong drooled a little at those words. It felt a little different from what I know of it. I've heard that when it happens, five colored circles appear when the person has gone into performing the five key choyon. There was a five colored glow, but it wasn't quite the same, right? Then something similar to that? Well, Hyunjung smiled bitterly. Anyway, it seems to have come from consuming the soul vitality pill. Looking at Chongmyung, Hyunjung smiled. After consuming that pill, Chongmyung's body began floating in the air. Then he emitted a five-colored light. At this point, wouldn't that mean that he was at the peak of absorbing and cultivating? Well then, 
Sec leader, what now? Just how much stronger is he now? Hyunjong shut his mouth. How much had he grown? Ugh. Seeing Hyunjung unable to speak, Hyunjung's eyes narrowed. Even the sect leader doesn't know. <clears throat> As if that could be true. Then why aren't you speaking? No. Come on, man. How could I possibly know that? He had never witnessed or even heard of such a thing in his life. The same guy who fought an elder of Wudang to a standstill took a pill and became even stronger. How could Hyunjung understand what his level was? He couldn't even ask for a match with Chongmyung. Very, um, extremely strong, I am certain. So, um, <laughs> it will be tough for me to put into words. D don't look at me with those eyes. Hyunjung sighed as Hyunjung carefully avoided his gaze. Anyway, being strong is a good thing. Right, this is a good thing. It was unknown if this was a good thing or not. For now, they were flying high. While everyone was buzzing around, Chung Myung looked down at his hands. I didn't expect. There is a limit when it comes to ki that can be extracted from a pill and absorbed. The ki accumulated in his body is the purest ki in the world. No matter how refined the pill was, it could not be compared to Chung Myung's pure ki. Wasn't that why there was no significant growth in Chongmyung after taking the pill in the past? However, the soul vitality pill was different from what Chongmyung thought. The ki it had wasn't very high compared to the supreme pill. Instead, it was several times purer. Perhaps, this is the most perfect item for me. Of course, he couldn't absorb even half of the ki he received, and he had to discharge the rest. But where did the other half go? When he ate the pill in the cave before, he couldn't absorb even a handful of the key. This time, he had gotten a full half of it. Thanks to that, Chong Myung clenched his fist and extended it. His body felt full of vitality. I still have a long way to go. It was still a long way off from regaining his power from the past. But thanks to this, it felt like he was finally at the starting line after a long time. Hmm. With a satisfied smile, Chung Myung slowly turned his head. His Saihungs all stood there, watching. That disgusting monster. He must have surely gotten stronger. There, look at that light in his eyes. Is that person human? Is he a human? The Saihungs, who were familiar with Chung Myung, noticed that the waves of ki emanating from his body were stronger than before. <sighs> the heavens must be impartial. Why are the results so different despite eating the same pill? At this point, it was flustering. Pills alone don't determine a person's success. Some people consume pills and get stronger, while some eat them and end up floating in the air and blowing up residences. Wasn't that a little too unfair? Hyunyong ran to Chongmyung. How is it? The effects? <laughs> Elder! This might actually make me live. D then, ah, oh, thank God. Chung Myung smacked his lips. This is more effective than I thought, right? What Chung Myung lacked the most right now was internal ki. He thought that there was no way to increase his ki other than with the passage of time, as pure ki was hard to make. But now, he found another way. This, if I eat more, Will it increase further? Chong Myung glanced at Hyunjung with shining eyes, and Hyunjung tightly clenched a box of pills in his hand. Oh, no. It was clear that he was aiming for the soul vitality pill, but this needed to be saved for the future of Man Hua. Never, never. Chong Myung walked toward Hyunjung with an innocent smile. Sect leader. Yeah, yes. I don't think it'll be a big deal if we use a few more pills, right? The this Hyunjung stepped back. No. Before Chong Myung could say anything, Hyunjung screamed. What do you think will happen in the future? Mount Hua has yet to establish a functioning medical hall. If someone gets seriously injured, we have to use this to save them. Ah. 
Chong Myung exclaimed as if moved. Chong Myung thought that the sect leader was just behaving pitifully by hoarding these pills, but his actions held such a deep meaning. Again, there was no one who cared about the disciples here more than Hyun Jung, but Hyun Jung didn't know that he had just made a massive mistake. Ah, so you mean to say that you'll keep it to use it when someone gets injured or something? Yeah, yes? Hyunjung sensed something was amiss from Chung Myung's tone and flinched. He felt certain that the disciple must have misunderstood something. Sec leader? Yes. I would like to thank you. Chung Myung bowed his head. However, the polite reaction only further incited Hyunjung's anxiety. Chung Myung raised his head and opened his mouth with a smirk. Yunnan is a dangerous place. This medicine will be a great help to the disciples who are entering that dangerous place. Again, that dangerous place. A place where you never know what will happen. In a land ruled by terrifying barbarians. No, you just said you'd break their heads open. <laughs> Sec leader, I'm fine. This Chong Myung will continue to constantly risk his life for the sake of Mount Hua. Uh, but... Chong Myung shook his head. If the Sasuks and Saiyungs that are coming with me to that dangerous place get injured and die right before my eyes, I don't think I will have peace even after death. Uh, uh, why did this story end up like this? N no, that... In that dangerous situation, just one pill. No, three. No, all we need are five pills. Why does it keep going up? You little mugger, robbing me in broad daylight. I think we'll be able to return alive with just five of them. Just five. Ha <laughs> ha. But that can't be spared, can it? Because those soul vitality pills are for the future of Mount Hua. Ruh. Right. Chung Myung looked at Baek Chun. Sasuk! In sect leader's eyes, Sasuk isn't the future of Mount Hua. Why are you dragging me into this, you idiot? But what I'm saying is right. My word. Oh, oh my. This sect. The disciples are putting their lives on the line and walking right into deadly battles. But they think the pills are wasted on us. Pills are valued over men. At that moment, tuck, someone put their hand on Hyun Jung's shoulder. When he turned around, Hyun Jung saw Hyun Young with a weird smile. Just give it up. Isn't that better than dying from frustration? Hyun Jung grabbed his head. I... I will give them to you, you thief. As time passed, Hyun Jung's words towards Chung Myung turned harsh. Chapter 177 It is better than dying from frustration. Hyun Jung narrowed his eyes as he looked at Chong Myung. However, Chong Myung comfortably received a sharp gaze and had a puppy-like expression. <laughs> it had been several decades since he had committed himself to this lifestyle. At this moment, Hyun Jung's unshakable composure, which had never once wavered despite the constant suffering and numerous disasters that brought ruin to Mount Hua, was beginning to crack. Just one hit to the back of his head. I wish for nothing more. Oh, Lord in the heavens, how could you send someone like this to Mount Hua? What sins have I committed to deserve this? It's been said, fortune and failure walk in lockstep. But did that equation really need to apply to this idiot too? Why was it that Mount Hua's divine dragon was Mount Hua's greatest disaster as well as the greatest blessing? What the hell was that about? <laughs> Set leader, thank you! <laughs> Chung Myung couldn't hold back his laughter and constantly lowered his head, rubbing his chest. As he watched that, the fire inside Hyun Jung kept burning stronger. I am not doing this because I like you. Wasn't this kid robbing him? He had robbed Hyun Jung of a chance to dole out treasures in a good way. Straight from the hands of the sect leader, he just stole whatever he wanted. 
<gasps> Hyunjong couldn't hide the discomfort on his face and looked at Hyunyong. Sec leader, I know, I get it. Hyunjong, who had been tempted to scold Hyunyong, went silent before looking at Chongmyung and speaking. It will not be easy. Oh, don't worry, sec leader. I have the soul vitality pills with me. What is there to worry about? Is that bastard doing this on purpose? Just one hit on the head. Just one. Please. <laughs> Realizing that he was losing composure, Hyunjung sighed heavily and coughed. Chong Myung. Chong Myung realized that the sect leader's tone had become serious and corrected his attitude as well. I don't feel comfortable knowing that I keep giving you these difficult and dangerous tasks. Chong Myung raised his head and looked at Hyunjung. Sec leader. Chong Myung smiled brightly. That's just how it has to be. Isn't that right? It was true. Hyunjung, who somehow subdued his temper, smiled. Chong Myung often did something that caused the sec leader's stomach to churn, and sometimes it was hard to handle. But despite that, Hyunjung could never bring himself to hate or try to change Chong Myung. Even that condescending attitude towards others. Sometimes he behaved like a child even younger than himself, and at other times he felt like a man older than Hyunjung. Still, the strangeness doesn't seem to go away. How can one person have so many sides? Hyunjung let out a laugh and continued. <laughs> right, you are right. That is true, but there's nothing more I can do about this. Don't worry. Aside from the great distance, it won't be a problem. The five palaces beyond the Great Wall are famous for their eccentric nature. But I heard that the arches of the Nanman Beast Palace are particularly bizarre and harsh, to the point where the rules of the martial sects do not work. It will be fine. Cho Myung smiled. Do you have another way? <laughs> you know. Cho Myung gently tapped the sword on his waist. Ugh. It was true. That has been the answer to many things since time immemorial. But they were meant to walk on the path of a Taoist. Hyunjung closed his eyes. If you are going to pursue the Tao, then Chong Myung should never be allowed outside. Perhaps understanding what Hyunjung was talking about, Baek Chun stood in front of Chong Myung. Sect leader, do not worry too much. Oh, do you see? That noble spirit. He was looking at Chong Myung, but when he saw Baek Chun, it felt as though the pain inside was melting away like snow in the spring sun. Although they are called the Nanman Beast Palace, they're still human, and we can communicate with them. We will try our best to solve this diplomatically as much as possible. If we approach them with sincerity, they will cut our heads off and hang them on pikes. Yes, I will kindly accept. I'm talking here, you brat. You're saying something stupid like that. If everything could be resolved through dialogue, then why would any wars ever break out? Wars happen because of people like you. Because of people like you. As long as there are people in the world like you, they'll keep happening. Am I wrong? Tell me. Are you trying to make a mess of Mount Hua? Hyunjung shook his head while watching Baek Chun and Chung Myung. <sighs> this one sucks too. Baek Chun, who was dedicated to the Tao in the past, had been tainted by Chong Myung's influence. If things are like this, the future of Mount Hua won't be all good times. The future seemed to be both bright and dark. It felt a bit confusing. Ugh. Anyway, I will stop this guy from running wild as much as I can, so please trust us. Hyun Jung nodded his head heavily. Baek Chun, listen. Yes, Sec Leader. From now on, you will act on my behalf. What you say in Nanman will be my word, and your will represents the will of Mount Hua. He was giving him full power. Baek Chun, who recognized the weight of those words, lamented and sighed. That's too heavy, Sec Leader. You can do it. Hyun Jung smiled brightly. The experience was necessary for the children. Fear was bound to precede situations that were fresh and unfamiliar. 
Only by pressing forward through the fear and doing the deeds that needed to be done would one's world begin to expand. Then we'll head off. I will pray for good luck to you all. Baek Chun bowed, and the rest of the disciples slowly mirrored the gestures to Hyunjung before leaving one by one. The party venturing to Nanman was no different from the one that went to Nanyang. Baek Chun, Chung Myung, Yun Jung, Jogul, and Yu Yi Sir. In other words, this party was now the group most trusted by Mount Hua's senior leadership. Of course, Chung Myung didn't appropriately fit into the category of trust. Watching them leave, Hyun Sang spoke with a worried tone. Shouldn't one of us take charge and lead them? Mm. Hyun Jung also let out a low sigh. He found himself not knowing what to say. The previous trip to Nanyang was something we had to send the children to do. But this time is different. It's too dangerous to send the children to such a rough place without anyone to lead them. Please send me too. I... Sayong! Don't push yourself into it for nothing. Hyun Sang looked at Hyun Yong, who intervened. Hyun Yong's expression was calm, but it felt strange. What will be different if we go and lead them? You're so cold-hearted. Wouldn't it be enough to have an adult with them? Hyun Yong snorted. As adults, what did we even do for them till now? Have we given them anything besides a ruined manhua and a ragged signboard? Ahem. <clears throat> Hyun Sang blushed at the retort and loudly coughed. Seeing his reaction, Hyun Yong clicked his tongue. When old people look at the youth, everything they see causes concern and distrust. But trying to interfere now will only hinder the children's growth. Since when did you trust the children so much? I don't trust them. How could I possibly trust them? Then? Hyun Yong grinned at Hyun Sang's question. I don't trust them. But I know they are much better than me at the very least. Hyun Sang shut his mouth. Hyun Jung, who listened quietly, also nodded. The children in her arms. If they were sent away, it was only natural for them to be worried because they only saw them as their children. However, coddling the children and keeping them in their arms wasn't the right path for them. Sometimes, they need to be let go and experience adversity and pain in order to grow. Mount Hua's ancestors will protect the children. Hyun Jung had no way of knowing that the kid who bullied him was one of the ancestors in a child's body. After a while, You have a guest! Mount Hua's people! Don't ignore me and bring me a glass of cold water! Huh? Hyun Jung, who was resettling the disorganized sect, turned his head at the loud voice coming from behind. Guest? What kind of guest could it be? Was anyone supposed to be visiting Mount Hua today? There was no mention of a guest in their schedule. There wasn't even a guard posted at the gate today. In the end, Hyun Yong went directly to the gate and opened it himself. A beggar? Outside the door, a beggar was sitting on the ground. Ah, oh my god, why is this mountain so steep? I thought I was going to die on my way up. Who are you? Ah, the beggar got up from his seat and spoke. I am Hong Daeguang from the Beggars Union. When the beggar said that, Hyun Yong was befuddled. Ah. Hong Daeguang, who guzzled down his cold water, raised his head and smiled. Ah, oh my, thank you for looking after me, sect leader. I am Hong Daeguang, the one in charge of the branch in Luoyang. <laughs> I am the sect leader of Mount Hua. Hyun Jung, please forgive me for coming here unannounced. Hong Daeguang bowed flat on the spot, and Hyun Jung waved his hands in embarrassment. Wha- Why are you doing this? Please, get up. At the same time, he realized his status and went silent. Judging from the knot tied around the beggar's waist, it was clear that he was a seven-knot beggar. The beggar's union had a unique way of displaying one's status based on knots. Ten meant the leader, nine knots are former leaders, and eight knots are given to former elders. Seven meant that he was an elder, and this is a knot tied by each branch leader of the sect or elders. In other words, Hong Daeguang was a seven-knot individual who held real power within the beggars' union. He might be a person aiming for the position of a full-fledged elder. 
How could such a person bow to Hyunjong? But what's going on? <laughs> it isn't anything difficult. I am here as the leader of the newly opened branch in Hwam. In Hwam? Hyunjong seemed slightly shocked at what he heard, prompting Hong Daeguang to ask. Didn't Mount Hua's divine dragon tell you? That child is a bit... Uh, right, I can understand. Hong Daeguang, who recalled Chung Myung, immediately understood and nodded. No matter how strange the action, Chung Myung did so many strange things that nothing he did seemed odd anymore. Well, we've opened the branch down in Hualm, and I'm here to greet the elders of Mount Hua. That's such good news. Hyun Jung smiled. Opening a branch in Hualm was tantamount to declaring they would be stealing Mount Hua's information and collecting data. Rather than feeling reluctant, however, Hyun Jung was quite welcoming of this announcement because they could receive more information from the branch as long as they developed a good relationship. So I'll see you often in the future. Oh, and at the request of Mount Hua's Divine Dragon, a few beggars will reside in Nanyang. If there's anything you want to tell the Huayong sect, we can deliver it on your behalf. You wouldn't mind. <laughs> of course we wouldn't, sect leader. I will do anything if it means building a good relationship with Mount Hua. And if you need information from us, please let me know. I will give you as much information as I can get. Ah, uh, thank you so much. Hong Daeguang swiped his nose at those words. The sect leader seems like a normal person. Still, it was relieving to know that there weren't only crazy people like Mount Hua's divine dragon in Mount Hua. Even though he knew it was impossible, Hong Daeguang felt anxious on his way up. I wish you all the best in the future. The same to you. With a friendly atmosphere, words of thanks were exchanged. Then, as if he suddenly remembered, Hong Daeguang asked, But, where is Mount Hua's divine dragon? We've been through so much, but he isn't here to see me. Ah, the kids just went out for work. Out for work? It doesn't seem like it's been too long since they returned. Hong Daeguang tilted his head. So then, when will they get back? Well, Yunnan is pretty far away. You, Yunnan? Do you mean they went to Yunnan? Oh no, why did they go so far away after calling someone here? What am I supposed to do now? Why even bring it up here? Who would do such a thing? I've done everything he asked me to do and even caught the beggars he wanted. But the guy who made me do all this work went off to Yunnan. When did he leave? Just now. <sighs> Mount Hua's divine dragon! You damn son of a bitch! Hong Daeguang charged out. The door slammed shut and Hyun Jung's hair recoiled from the force. He absentmindedly stared at the door after the bizarre situation ended before bursting into a dejected laugh. <laughs> Why are the people Chung Jung brings back always so ludicrous? Hyun Jung couldn't erase the thought that Man Hua had taken a step higher and gained another headache at the same time. Chapter 178 it is better than dying from frustration. After descending Mount Hua and arriving at Hualm, Chong Myung and his party headed to the Unha branch there. Huang Zhongyi, who was waiting politely, said, Come here. Baek Chun looked at the large carriage and smiled bitterly. We'll be riding this one. With two sets of horses in front of the carriage, he first felt skeptical about whether he could really enjoy such luxury. It seems a bit too much. It isn't, Huang Zhongyi said with a humble face. This is because of our failure. If we can help, we should do it properly. Huang Zhongyi straightened himself. This happened because the Unha Guild could not procure the ingredients requested by Mount Hua. Of course, it wasn't their fault. But since they benefited much from Mount Hua, they couldn't help but acknowledge it. 
Huang Munyak also gave special instructions to support Manhua's disciples and ensure they didn't feel inconvenienced. Oh, young master, you seem to have spent some money, Chong Myung said while shrugging his shoulders. But I don't think this will be of much use. It'll be faster for us to run. Wh- what are you saying? How can a person run faster than a horse? Although his sayings protested, Chong Myung just smiled and gently continued. It's possible. Don't worry, don't worry. There's nothing a person can't do with effort. No, you idiot. You need to think with some common sense. Huh? Breaking that common sense is what martial artists are all about. If we run like dogs, then we can run faster than a horse. <sighs> He's gone crazy. Huang Munyak laughed at Chong Myung's words. Of course, that would be possible for young disciple Chong Myung. And it shouldn't be much difficult for the other disciples of Mount Hua. But saving a bit of energy on your journey would be better. Think of it that way. Oh? On the road to Sichuan, the merchants of our guild will keep additional horses prepared. When the horses get tired, they can be changed along the way. If the horses can keep going without a break, wouldn't it be possible to shorten the time to Yunnan by a lot? Baek Chun, who had been listening silently till now, asked in shock. You're giving us such precious horses. Even if they are precious, wouldn't it serve a greater purpose if Mount Hua's disciples made use of them? Don't worry about such things. Baek Chun quickly closed the distance to Huang Zhonggi. Thank you so much for the kindness and hospitality Unha is showing. This was something he was truly grateful and appreciative of. However, the real reason he felt such gratitude was because he was afraid that Chong Myung would run them to death. Hmm. Look, look. Chong Myung was already sticking his mouth out as if he didn't like it. Don't use your mouth to show displeasure. It wouldn't be polite to refuse the Unha Guild's favor. You'll ride it then. Everyone, get on. Baek Chun quickly jumped into the carriage and took the lead. The others also rushed onto the carriage without looking back. Soon after... Chong Myung dragged himself onto the carriage as if he had no choice but to go along with their whims. Chong Myung looked at everyone. All at once, as if they had discussed it beforehand, everyone lowered their heads and avoided eye contact with Chong Myung. What? Chong Myung nodded. Well, fine. This might be better. He accepted it so easily. What is with him? Everyone was terrified and nervous. But Huang Zhonggi, unaware of the situation, smiled at the sight. It would look like a friendly relationship to those who didn't know. Huang Zhonggi, standing right in front of the door, spoke. This is something I should have done in the first place, but I don't think I will be able to accompany you all the way to Yunnan since the other ingredients requested by Manhua are still hard to find. Eh, of course, it is a hard job. When Chong Myung waved his hand, Huang Zhongyi smiled as though his mind felt at ease. Instead, someone accustomed with traveling to Yunnan will drive the carriage and serve you. Yes. A man came forward and bowed to them. This is Libo of the Unha Merchant Guild. I am Libo of the Unha Merchant Guild. I will take you all the way to Yunnan. Take good care of us. Take good care of us, please. Take good care of us, please. Li Bo smiled as he looked at the disciples of Mount Hua who greeted him politely. Contrary to what the master said, they seemed so polite. Since they were supposed to be strict Taoists, this much should be expected. So why had his master told him to be careful? There was a clear difference between being told to serve and take care of them compared to being careful. Then we should leave. Li Bo carefully closed the carriage door and looked at Huang Zhonggi. I am leaving, young master. I don't feel comfortable putting this huge burden onto you. Please do your best, thinking that the name of Unha is at stake. Of course, young master. Li Bo nodded and climbed onto the carriage. Without delay, he pulled the reins and started the carriage. Huang Zhongyi's expression softened as he watched the carriage disappear. Even if it's young disciple Chong Myung, Nanman Beast Palace is not an easy place to deal with. He refrained from saying such things because he thought it would be nothing more than nagging, but he was inevitably worried regardless. The carriage moved without rest. As Huang Zhongyi said, by the time the horses got tired of running, new horses were prepared by the branches of Unha. 
This made it quick to swap the horses and continue moving. Of course, this resulted in the carriage developing some damage and erosion, but no one complained. This was because everyone knew how important this trip to Yunnan was for Mount Hua. Sasuk, what kind of place is the Naman Beast Palace? Um. Baekchun let a low voice in response to Yun Zhong's question. Actually, I don't know much about the palace, so I plan on stopping by the Beggars Union branch in Sichuan to get some information. The Beggars Union branch? Right. Our time in Nanyang gave us a chance to create a good relationship with them, so we should be able to get that much information. Ah! He definitely thought that the relationship with Beggars Union played a big help. In the past, it would have been difficult to get information. But from what I've heard, there doesn't seem to be much information about Nanman Beast Palace. Not much from the Beggars Union, since our connection with them was severed. I see. I feel like they mainly use physical strength, and just like their name as a beast's palace, they act like beasts. But that's all old information. At that moment, Chung Myung, who was quietly listening from the side, said, It doesn't really matter what kind of place the Nanman Beast Palace is. Huh? Whether they control animals or cast ghosts onto us, what's important isn't what kind of people they are, but how strong they are. Um. Unable to see anything wrong with what was said, Baekchun nodded. Jogul carefully looked at Baekchun's eyes and spoke. From what I heard, each of the five palaces is as strong as the nine great sects. I've also heard that many times. Then the Naman Beast Palace too. Well, Baekchun shook his head. In the past, that evaluation wouldn't be wrong. But they won't be the same now as they were in the past. Weren't all of the five palaces beyond the Great Wall damaged by the demonic sect? Except for the North Sea Ice Palace. Right. In the past, the demonic sect didn't just go after the sects in the Central Plains. Fearing that their actions would soon spread and make others unite against them, the demonic sect began to go after the other sects one by one. The assaults began with the five palaces beyond the Great Wall, except for the North Sea Ice Palace, which was in the far north and out of reach from the demonic sect. Everyone else fell to their knees after being crushed by them. It was said that countless people died in the process, so it shouldn't be possible for the sects to regain their former power in one short hundred-year period. Then, things might be easier. That would be nice, but... Chung Myung, listening silently till then, opened the carriage window and stuck his head out. Coach Libo! Yes, disciple Chung Myung. Let's stop and eat. Let's eat. We'll arrive at a village in a little while. Wouldn't it be better to have some food there? No, this place looks good. Yes, I understand. Libo stopped the carriage on the side. Everyone looked at Chung Myung, unable to understand why he did this. Why did you suddenly stop the carriage? I have work to do. Chongmyung chuckled. Everyone, get down! The others were all anxious as they looked at Chongmyung and gulped. But with an innocent smile on his face, Chongmyung simply pointed to the door. What? You won't get down? Something didn't feel right. Something felt disturbing. Everyone packed their things and got off the carriage, but Jogo left his luggage in the carriage. Yunjong asked quietly, Why are you leaving your things behind? What if he just goes crazy and takes the carriage? He wouldn't do that if I left my luggage behind. Uh, you think that if your luggage is in there, he won't take the carriage? Wouldn't your things just disappear? Jogo lifted his luggage without another word. Once again, he realized what kind of person Chung Myung was. When they all got off the carriage, Chung Myung tilted his head. Why did you bring your luggage out? Wh what do you mean? When Baek Chun asked, Chung Myung simply shrugged. I told you. You just had to do what I told you. That's why... Sasuk! Chung Myung cut off Baek Chun's words and asked. How helpful was Sasuk in the sword tomb? Baek Chun's face went stiff. I... Helpful. Help. How helpful was he to Chung Myung? Baek Chun bit his lip. His self-esteem was hurt, but he knew the answer. I was just a burden. In his mind, he would deny it a thousand times. But Baekchun knew very well that it would be unsightly to deny facts that even he knew. Right! He didn't mean to disgrace his Sasuks and Sahyungs, 
but the truth had to be laid out. Cheng Ming was getting stronger quickly, and the work he had to do was slowly becoming more and more dangerous. However, those who were moving together with Cheng Ming could not keep up with his pace. In the past, Cheng Ming would have abandoned them and run away alone, but he wasn't going to do that now. Cheng Ming clearly recognized what he had to do after suffering through the sword tomb and experiencing Yaxun's tomb. The path forward was meaningless if these people weren't with him. Yunnan could be a more dangerous place than the sword tomb, but at everyone's current level, your lives are at risk. Baek Chun bit his lip. It's not as though we're unaware of that, but there's no way we can increase our skill in a short period. Why not? Huh? Cheng Ming smiled bitterly. Sasuke already consumed the soul vitality pill. If you digest it well enough, you'll be twice as strong as you are now. Baekchun nodded. The power of the soul vitality pill was beyond imagination. Thanks to that, he couldn't even absorb most of the key within and needed to push it into his dungeon for later. The problem was, no matter how hard I try, it will take at least several years to make that mine completely. Even if it is used for the short term, it will only work for a short time. Oh. Don't worry, one month will be enough. W one month? Baekchun was shocked. Really? Do you think I would lie? Yeah. The atmosphere grew a bit awkward. Right, I could lie, but not this time. I hope that's true. But how the hell can we absorb the key quickly? Do you have some way to help us? <coughs> Cheng Myung clapped his hands. That's right. Baek Chun's face changed as his sense of expectation rose. Is that possible? If someone else had said this, then he would have chucked and dismissed it, because Baek Chun knew just how difficult it would be to meddle with someone else's key. But this was Chung Myung who spoke. Baek Chun knew that Chung Myung never lied or made empty boasts, at least not when it came to martial arts. Hadn't he already experienced enough with Chung Myung to know that? How? Are you going to help us with absorbing it? Ah, not like that. There's a much easier way. A much easier way? This monstrous bastard. Baekchun clenched his fist. If he could absorb the concentrated lump of key from the soul vitality pill stored in his dungeon, then his strength would be incomparable to now. What the disciples of Mount Hua lacked the most right now was a steady accumulation of key. But unlike Baekchun, who was trembling in excitement, there were two more trembling in anxiety. Sayung, that guy is up to something again. What is he going to do this time? There, see that smile? He's definitely up to something. Jogul and Yunjong, who had been harassed by Chong Myung for the longest time, were anxious and afraid. They knew that something bad always followed when Chong Myung acted gently. How can you help? Baek Chun, who didn't notice the feeling of his juniors, asked excitedly, it isn't anything complex, it'll just be a little tough. I can handle it, anything if it means becoming stronger. True? Huh? What? Are those words true? Are you confident that you can go through anything to get stronger? Uh, I feel a bit taken aback. Why? Chong Myung walked toward Baek Chun with a smile. Yes, right. I love this attitude of yours where you look to the future. I felt bad when Sasuke lost. It was a bit weird, but I feel at ease seeing Sasuke come forward like this. Why do I feel like I said something I shouldn't have? Sasuke! Yes. Have you ever heard the term pushing past the blood points before? Pushing past the blood points? How could I not know? When the key is clogged or blocked, the location is hit or needed to release the key. Uh... But why are you talking about this now? No. It can't be what I'm thinking of, right? Right? While cracking his neck, Chong Ming approached Baek Chun, who began to step back without realizing it. Crack. And slowly, Chong Ming clenched his fists. Crack. Sasuk, this is definitely not because I have ill feelings towards you. No, no, this is purely emotional. But... Chong Ming's eyes shone. He shouted while raising his fists. I hope you understand these fists carry nothing but the pure power of love. Baek Chun looked up at the sky with tears in his eyes. Oh, holy heavenly God, please punish this bastard.
Chapter 179 It is better than dying from frustration. So, Hodo Jinin quietly placed the teacup in his hand on the table. You came back after being humiliated like that by Marhua's children. Ho Sanja just closed his eyes without answering. Ho Sanja. Yes, sick leader. It's strange. This is something to be ashamed of, but I don't see any shame on your face. What am I supposed to make of this? Ho Sanja let out a low sigh. Sick leader. Please. The reason I'm not ashamed is that I did the best I could. If I had been careless or stupid and experienced such failure because of that, then I would ask the sec leader to punish me right away. But I did my best and there is nothing to be ashamed of. I just lacked the necessary strength. I see. Hodo Jinin frowned. Ho Sanja had the confidence and power to lead people. That was why this man was one of the most trusted in the sect. For such a man to make this statement meant that his opponent were anything but easy. Even though I went to the sword tomb and returned with nothing but humiliation, I am not ashamed. Ho Do Jinin took the teacup in his hand and took a sip and sighed. Then he placed it back on the table. If you say so, then I get it. Sect leader. If there was nothing in the sword tomb, then there was nothing you would get from it anyway. This isn't your fault. I apologize. There is nothing to apologize for. A bitter smile hung on Hodo Jinin's lips. Excessive greed breeds anger in the body. Even though our Wudang sect shouldn't succumb to such feelings, we keep wanting more. It's good enough that we all don't obsess over this. And forgive me for sending our disciples down there to suffer needlessly. How can that be the sect leader's fault? I was terribly lost in greed. I was too enchanted by the reputation of the soul vitality pill and Yaksun. I never could have foreseen that man making such a place. Ho Do Jinin laughed at the thought of being fooled by someone who died 200 years ago. Did he mean to say that martial arts are meaningless? Those are the final words of a man that left nothing behind. Ho Sanja tilted his head, unable to understand. But Ho Do Jinin didn't explain it to him. Sometimes, not knowing was better. He just closed his eyes and gathered his thoughts. Finally, he opened his eyes as he asked Ho Sanja. But just one thing. Yes, there's something I'm struggling to understand. Did you say that child from Mount Hua could stand on equal footing with you? Yes. Ho Do Jinin frowned. It could not be said that Ho Sanja had exceptional strength compared to all the Wudang's elders. Rather, it could even be said that he was a bit lagging behind. However, even if he was lacking, he was still an elder of Wudang. A child couldn't match his level. It could never happen. But wasn't Ho Sanja himself saying that it happened? A genius. He was a monstrous genius. Ho Do Jinin sighed. Ho Sanja continued. I'm confident I would have won the fight if we continued. But that means nothing. Right. It's natural for you to win. The problem is, I have no idea how much time it would take to subdue that child. Which means... He is on par with you. Yes. Listening to what Ho Sanja said, depending on their physical conditions at the time and a little luck, the fight could have gone either way. If that was the case, it could be said they are on the same level. <laughs> are you saying that a third-class disciple of Mount Hua is equal to an elder of Wudang? And you laughed when I said that he defeated Mu Jin. This was no longer a laughing matter. There is a genius in Mount Hua. A monstrous genius. Ho Do Jinin's hand trembled as he thought. His fingertips, which tightly held the teacup, repeatedly pressed down on the cup as he poured tea into it. Ho Sanja felt a series of complicated emotions rise when he looked at his sect leader and kept silent while waiting for the sect leader's complex thoughts to be organized. Only after the cup of tea began to cool did Ho Do Jinin speak. 
Leave it alone. Will that be all right? I know what you're trying to say. In the past, Manhua was a great Taoist sect. At one time, it even came close to standing above the name of Erudang too. It isn't something we should ignore. But, he continued, there is a limit to what one genius can do, especially in a collapsed sect like Mount Hua. That child will one day fall from exhaustion while dragging the sect called Mount Hua behind him. He wasn't an ordinary child. Aside from his talent in martial arts, he had good judgment and boldness too. I see that you look at the boy with respect. Ho Sanja nodded his head. I tried to convince him that I would take him in as a disciple of Wudang if I could. To that extent, I said that he could even have a seat among the second class disciples and right below the sect leader. Ho Doujinin frowned. Ho Sanja's offer clearly exceeded the authority of an elder. Even so, to speak about it so proudly in front of him meant that if the sect leader saw that child for himself, he would say the same thing. Could there be any better evaluation of the child? This was tough. This was more of a compliment than an analysis. But, even then, the decision won't change. He can only raise his own reputation. It's impossible for a sect to be led entirely by one person. The power of many people walking together with a strong sense of brotherhood is what determines a sect's position. This isn't something they can do. Haldo Jin shook his head. Let's settle this by strengthening our surveillance of Mount Hua for now. Sect leader, I'm still worried about that child. Don't worry. Perhaps the next time you see him, you will understand what I mean by this. Ho Sanja nodded. All right. Now, get yourself together. You have a lot of work to do. Yes, sect leader. Ho Sanja nodded as he stood up. Standing in front of the door as if he was ready to leave, he suddenly stopped and spoke again. But, hmm? Ho Sanja turned back and looked into the eyes of the sect leader. What if that child already knows about what the sect leader said? About one man not being able to lead a sect? Yes. Ho Do Jinin thought and then spoke softly. That cannot be the case. And even if he knows, nothing will change. Talent isn't something that can be developed just because you've made up your mind. I understand. Tuck. As he left the room, the sect leader picked up the teacup and brought it to his lips. What if he knew? The answer remains the same. That cannot happen. Because this has nothing to do with how exceptional that child is. All of that can only be learned through experience. So while the child is young and full of life, he would never realize these things. By the time he finally gains the necessary experience, that child will not be as young as he is now. But even still, what if he knew? What if something like that really happens? The day may come when Manhua's name stands in front of the Wudang. Ho Do Jinin smiled. That is too much. An overstatement. <laughs> Dud. Jogul, who was hit and fell over, kept stroking his neck with trembling hands. It was a solid hit, but it didn't break. He was worried that his neck had been broken from how violently his body turned, but fortunately, nothing broke. But then came the pain. <laughs> it hurt. This pain was too extreme. When Jogul grabbed his chin and rolled on the floor, Chongmyung clicked his tongue. Look at that. How shameful. Jogul was stunned. Look at that. What did that mean? He was seriously hurt. He thought that he had lost his jaw for a second there. Stop being such a crybaby and get up. My love for Sayong's is still overflowing. I might change my mind about all this if I have to experience that damn love twice, you crazy idiot. He was more tenacious than the hound, more diligent than the horse. And once he made up his mind, he could do anything. Running away or whining wouldn't make his fists any softer. Then what? Ah! Uh, once! Just once! Just let me hit you once! Jogul closed his eyes and ran towards Chongmyung. 
since he would get hit no matter what he did, the situation suddenly became a conflict. But Chung Myung smiled as if he was happy to be in this situation. Of course, smiling and laughing couldn't suddenly turn him into a good person. What kind of person smiles brightly in this situation? Right, right, come running. Pak, next is your back. Pak, Sayong, Sayong. Huh? Your feet too. In the end, tears welled up in Jogul's eyes. The foot that was being trampled on by Chung Myung began turning red in agony. Waste, 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 waste. Jogul suddenly realized that so many parts of the human body could be called the waste. There were so many wastes in the body that it felt like everything was a waste. <coughs> Jogul tried to calm himself down, but Chung Myung immediately whacked him on the back. Ah! The shrill scream of Jogul rang out. Ah! Next! Chung Myung's eyes shone in search of his next prey. Yu Yi Sir, who was looking at him, stood confidently and spoke proudly. Don't go easy on me because I'm a woman. Puh! Huh? What? Nothing. Yu Yi Sir rushed to Chung Myung. Her sword was ready to pierce Chung Myung's throat. Her sword truly had the force to sever Chung Myung's neck. Chung Myung looked at the sharp sword and smiled delightedly. I see the killing intent. Dodging Yu Yi So's sword, Chung Myung began to strike Yu Yi So's entire body. You seem to have misunderstood what it means to be light footed. <laughs> you shouldn't sacrifice strength for lightness. It's only light when you can control your ki in both ways. But you swing your sword like a three year old playing around. <laughs> Yu Yi So held her sword and pulled back. Chung Myung's body seemed to flicker and he appeared behind her. Yeah, the back! Chung Myung fired a series of 12 shots instantly, tapped on her back, and turned around. The end! Dud. Yu Yi Sir also fell to the floor with a trembling body. Now, I think we've done enough! Chung Myung smiled refreshingly as he looked at his Sasuks and Sahyungs scattered on the ground. Let's take a break and go at it again! Hey, you fucking bastard! Are you even human? Are you a human? Oh my, my ancestors! What kind of Saje does this to Isayo? Those who collapsed continued to curse him in any way they could imagine. Huh? What? Your voice is so weak that I can't hear you. When Chung Myung put his hand to his ear and pretended to be deaf, the cursing only grew more intense. Coach Libo, who was watching this from afar, smiled as though he had attained enlightenment. This is completely disgraceful. Now, he finally understood why his young master told him to be careful of Chung Myung. Chapter 180 It is better than dying from frustration. The next day, Yun Zhong opened his eyes. Why am I sleeping here? Gradually, the memories came flooding in. Ugh! Yesterday, Chong Ming was going crazy on them again, and he fell asleep as he fainted. Huh? Wasn't that the same as just fainting? Anyway, ugh, I don't want to get up. If he were to open his eyes and get up, he would have to go through what happened yesterday again. He didn't want to avoid the training, but honestly, it felt a bit too... <clears throat> Yun Zhong shook his head as he heard someone cry. Is he crying? Yun Zhong raised his body, shook his head to clear his vision, and looked to see where the crying was coming from. It was Jogul, who was lying face down nearby. Yun Zhong quickly got up and ran to him. Gul, Gul, are you alright? Sayong, <sighs> Sayong, are you wounded? Jogul raised his head with an expression that looked as if the world around him had collapsed. Yun Zhong looked at him with a serious face. The Jogul he knew was a man among men who firmly stood by his ideals as a macho man. He would never despair like this under any circumstances. Seeing Jogul choking back tears with a runny nose, it was clear that something horrible must have happened. <laughs> Sayong, 
My, my internal key, my internal key. Internal key? Did you suffer an internal injury? Uh, uh, <laughs> my internal key. Damn it, it went up. What the hell? Then why are you crying? Sayang, my internal key has gone up. So why are you crying, you crying bastard? Jogul made a mess of the situation and caused a panic in his frustration. Damn it, now that my internal key increased, won't we have to go through more of this? What? Did I hear that right? If I was fatigued or out of shape, I wouldn't have to get hit. I'd rather not get hit today. Why is my damn body getting stronger after being beaten? It doesn't make sense. Yun Zheng unknowingly checked his own key. It's true. He could clearly feel that his endurance and internal key increased. This was truly shocking. Just what was happening? This was the key he would have to build up over and over for the rest of his life, constantly working year-around to develop. Oh? Huh? It increased more compared to a year ago. He could feel it correctly. In just one day, his body experienced a massive improvement. This was an absurd thing to happen. It worked. It's been absorbed. Yun Zhong unknowingly touched his dungeon. Clearly, the pill's key, which had occupied the dungeon, was now absorbed into his body. In other words, I don't know if it should be called blood point release or a full body assault, but that crazy method actually worked. Just then, Baek Chun approached. The expression on his face looked even more bitter than theirs. Right. Yun Zhong was slightly confused by this situation. Should he like this or should he hate it? That. Baek Chun bit his lip as if he couldn't speak. This absurd thing actually worked. To say that Ki could be absorbed by beating people. If this happened to get out, all the martial sects would turn into violent sects. Huh? Maybe they were already in a violent sect. At that time, the root of all issues approached them. What are you whispering about? <clears throat> Beg Chun groaned. <sighs> the, the internal key has increased. Obviously it did. I had to work so hard yesterday because of that. Ah, oh, is that so? But why does the face of the person who worked so hard look so refreshed? It's obvious. Beg Chun sighed. I have nothing to say since the results are so clear, but I just cannot understand it at all. Isn't this method only supposed to help clear clogged blood vessels? It's similar to that. What I did is a little different, though. Then? I'm just beating you up. Beg Chun's hand almost twitched to his sword. Maybe we need to cut this guy down here to bring some peace to the world. That was, if he could do it. How does that work? Chung Meng clicked his tongue as if he felt annoyed. In the past, he would have felt that it was too cumbersome to bother explaining. He would have simply grabbed them by the hair and dragged them into doing as they were told. But now, he had no choice but to explain. Chung Meng reached out and tapped Baek Chun's chest. How did you make this? Huh? These muscles. Baek Chun gently lowered his head and looked at his chest. He definitely had solid muscles there. Before receiving Chung Meng's training, his muscles weren't this strong. Once he started to carry the iron lumps along with the third class disciples, his body became like this. I trained. Then how do you build muscle when training? That. Baek Chun went silent. It was such a natural thing that he never questioned it. There were countless ways he could answer, but none of them would be clear. It's simple. You got hurt. What is that supposed to mean? The muscle gets torn. Chong Myung slightly twisted his hand. Yun Zhong, who was listening next to him, tilted his head and asked, You're saying that muscles grow when they get injured? Not just muscles. Everything gets bigger after healing from injury. The place where the wound is made swells up, and broken bones grow back thicker than before. Depending on the situation, it might differ, but that's the most common case. Chong Myung chuckled. In other words, what's the best way to train the body? Get hurt. It might sound ignorant, but it is the truth. This is even a standard practice in the field. What about the famous story of the Shaolin whipping their bodies or shoveling their hands into hot sand? Beg Chun just nodded his head. It was a difficult story to empathize with because they were a sect that used swords. 
But Baek Chun had heard that the Shaolin sect and other sects that trained for close quarter combat used such methods. But isn't that method inappropriate for us since our focus is on swordplay? We have similar training in Manhua too. Huh? We do. When you first used the wooden sword, didn't your palms get torn several times? Baek Chun lowered his gaze and looked at his hands. Hard calluses that have been there since he began learning the sword caught his eye. Right. And now, does it still tear? No. The human body gets stronger the more it gets hurt. Going too far can cause excessive damage to the body, but an appropriate amount of injury makes the body stronger. Wow. Baek Chun looked at Chong Myung with admiration in his eyes. Why? No. Ugh. Looking at Chong Myung with a subtle gaze, he said, I just never imagined that you had such theories in your head. The others, who were listening on the side, added their own thoughts. Truly surprising. I thought you were the sort that just ate when hungry and fought when angry. So you actually use your head too, huh? Really now, these bastards! Chong Myung's face trembled. Should I show you what it's like when I don't use my head? <laughs> uh, is it going to rain? The weather is... They all looked away as soon as they heard what Chong Myung said. Shooting them all a wicked glare. Chong Myung continued. This is basically the same thing. What? Internal key works the same. Baek Chun didn't seem to believe it. What was Chong Myung talking about now? If we get internal injuries, it develops our key. Right. What nonsense. How can an internal injury be the same as exercising your muscles? If internal wounds continue piling up, people die. Die. If the internal wound is severe, then people die. R right. Chong Myung sighed. But it doesn't make a difference just because it's key. Having internal wounds means that your energy is damaged and suffering. In the process of recovering, Qi will gather and repair the stop flow of energy, eventually growing stronger than before. Ugh. Baek Chun nodded unknowingly. Currently, he had the key of the soul vitality pill within his body. With his skills, he could never absorb it in such a short time. But it was true that his body contained it. So the body is absorbing it on its own. Isn't that the result? Chong Meng shrugged his shoulders. It's not very difficult to understand. If you cause a proper injury and damage the internal flow, your body will need key to recover the damage. Then it will utilize the excess key stored within the body and use that in the repair process. Once that happens, the key is absorbed into the system and made stronger than it was previously. Chong Myung waved his hand. Key, body, a simple logic that works either way. Chong Myung smirked at the sight of his seniors, staring at him blankly as if he couldn't understand. Huh, <laughs> must be hard to understand for them. This wasn't something taught in martial sects. This was knowledge that Chong Myung acquired while wandering the battlefield countless times. It was a result of applying this very lightly to a safe level on his Saiyongs. But in reality, this theory was completed by him at a crossroad between life and death. It was only natural that those who hadn't learned this with their own bodies would find it difficult to understand. I don't understand a thing. Crack. The sound of bones cracking rang loudly from Chong Myung's fist. If your brains fail to grasp it, then I'll make your bodies understand it. Crack. Crack. Chong Myung cracked his neck from side to side and waved his hand as he approached them. Sasuke, just think of this as a spar. If you think about it like this, even if you get hit, you wouldn't mind it too much, right? No, that doesn't make it any better. <sighs> Chong Myung, it seems like your thinking is completely wrong. No situation in the world can make us feel at ease. Don't you understand? Where can you find better training than this? This is practical experience. It literally makes you use everything that you have. It'll also help increase your internal key and strength. Before that, I'll run away, you idiot. <laughs> Chong Myung laughed. It's fine. It's gonna be totally fine. You won't die. Seriously, you won't die. Have you ever heard of someone who died by training? <sighs> no, I've never heard of it. Of course no one ever heard of it. Dead people don't talk. You can never hear that, you idiot. Baek Chun took a deep breath. 
A fire was burning inside him, but for the first time, he suppressed his complaints. And suddenly, with a serious face, he grabbed the handle of his sword and shouted while looking at Chung Myung in front of him. Enough! Huh? So you're saying that if we endure this assault under the guise of training, we can get much stronger in a short period? Definitely! Chung Myung nodded his head without thought. This certainly sounds nice. Come to think of it, there will never be another chance like this. Aside from growing the internal key, he would also get to fight with this monster twice a day. This was a chance that any warrior would have dreamed of. But, Baek Chun gnashed his teeth. You better be careful. If you get a cut on your face, that bad impression you give will only get worse. Oh, Chung Myung smiled. This is how you take charge. This was why Chung Myung liked Baek Chun. No matter how much he got beaten, he would never give up. Try it if you can. Keep watching, you bastard. Baek Chun drew his sword and ran towards Chung Myung. Die! That won't do. Watching the two people starting to get entangled, Jogul lamented. Since when did that bandit get along so well with Sasuk? I don't know. Yin Jung sighed. <sighs> Will we be able to survive until we reach Yunnan? The two of them felt like the road to Yunnan was still too far away. <laughs>